Hey, sports fans, if you're heading out to watch the game and need a fill-up, why not join the Fuel Rewards Program and earn rewards on Shell Fuel? Members save on their Shell fill-up every day. So sign up free today at fuelrewards.com slash ESPN. Welcome to something that is always highly questionable. What do you like today, Bomani? Kevin Garnett inadvertently became like the host of the Real Housewives reunion, and I never thought that was going to happen. Dale, papi. Is Draymond right to question the CAF competition in the East? Everybody agrees with what Draymond said, but not everyone likes Draymond. I will say that it shows a flabbergasting amount of lacking in self-awareness because... Portland had the same record, minus one game from Indiana, same point differential. Utah, same record as what Cleveland just did to Toronto, same point differential. They're playing against the same kinds of opponents, both of these teams. Draymond's is no weaker. He could have waited another round and had it be more self-aware then. Well, the thing is, Draymond says this as though he's watching these games with the Cavs and that the Cavs are playing well, but the teams on the other side are not. I mean, those games with the Pacers were all close. Toronto, bless their hearts. You can't say they weren't trying. You see how flabbergasted they were after the series about how they just can't close the gap on LeBron James. That seems to be where it's confusing. He's acting like these other teams aren't trying. They're trying. They're just not good enough. Did you hear that Draymond called uh, Kelly Dolenic a dirty player? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yes. Boy, that takes some <laughs> off. <laughs> it really does, doesn't it? For him to call anyone else dirty. Oh, I see he like yeah. kick yeah do you think that kd russ reunion is possible peacemaker of our time kendrick perkins <laughs> was on tnt last night in the little area 21 thing they do with kevin garnett it was an improv to reunion of the 08 celtics we'll talk more about it but while there kendrick perkins said that yes he had talked to kevin durant he had talked to russell westbrook and they in fact had spoken to one another and he thinks that down the line kevin durant might go back to oklahoma city similar to the way that lebron went back to cleveland here's the difference though lebron's from cleveland nobody's going back there unless they're from there. Kevin Durant made a stop in Oklahoma City, and that's real cool. But if he wants to get back to the area, it's going to be by giving them a community center or something. I do think one of the things that's interesting here, though, is that LeBron James didn't enjoy being unpopular for that one stretch in his life where he was unpopular. And if Kevin Durant doesn't enjoy being unpopular, it wouldn't be unprecedented if he did what LeBron did, which is decide to go back to where it is that people will applaud him, root for the small market, he could do the same thing LeBron did. Famous, infamous, more famous. Likeable, not likable, more likable. That's what LeBron did. Durant could do something like that. If he's going back to Oklahoma City, you think he's going back to Oklahoma City? Because I don't think he's going back to Oklahoma City. Well, my sources, they tell me that it's very, very possible that they might get together again. Strong possibility. Here in Miami. They're going together in Miami, you know, playing in the East against LeBron. They want to go after LeBron in the East, buddy. They want to show LeBron that there's going to have some tough competition from now on, you know. And Pat Riley, the Godfather, is ready to close the deal. His, He's going to throw all these strings on the table. His sources are those voices he hears in his head because he's an old person. Is it time for the 2008 Celtics to forgive Ray Allen? <laughs> this is a long time to hold on to this kind of hurt and heartache. Watch again on TNT here. Watch what Paul Pierce is sitting in when he gives you some of these <laughs> quotes. <laughs> When we come back, all, he doesn't to stop. Uh, Area 21 is special tonight. KG and friends. Is Ray Allen there? Uh, no, he's not. Wait. Oh, oh, come on. Free Ray Allen. Free Ray Allen. Free Ray Allen. Free Ray Allen. Hey, Rondo, you know you could have had Ray. You know you could have had him up there. Come on, Ray Allen. All those assists, man. The quotes from these guys, how hurt, heartbroken, they thought Ray Allen should have gotten back to them and told them what it is that he was doing before he went to Miami, the enemy. Ray Allen is placed on Facebook today, a picture of him elbowing Ray John Rondo. Let's put that picture up there. That's what Ray Allen's countermeasure is to all this. I love Bomani. My favorite part not was was said, but what wasn't said. Rondo seethed throughout the entire interview, off to the side, silently, because he didn't have anything nice to say, and he was going to go off a lot worse than those guys did. Well, also, his beef appears to be different. All those guys are just mad that Ray Allen left Boston. Rondo's like, I didn't like him when he was here either, right? Now, you would think there should be some measure of forgiveness, because if they feel like Ray Allen didn't tell them, 
We all knew he was coming to Miami. We knew it when they lost that playoff series in Miami and Ray Allen looked like he was going around and saying, I'm going to be hanging out with you guys next year. It is crazy, though, to think that this is so public after all these years that somebody couldn't have let this go. Kevin Garnett, tough guy Kevin Garnett is up there with all those guys saying Ray Allen needs to be the one to come and apologize to us. How does that work? Kendrick Perkins, too, saying he's the one. Ray Allen's the one that's got to thaw this. Ray Allen's got to call us. Kendrick. He ain't calling you. You ain't ever getting a call. Maybe Garnett gets a call. Maybe Paul Pierce gets a call. Perk, you ain't getting no calls. And shout out to Glenn Davis for working his way into this lineup. (laughs) A rookie who wept on the sidelines. Wept on the sidelines, according to Doc Rivers, during one of the games. Well, this is what I think Ray Allen should do, you know? Ray Allen should go there and, you know, just uh, face those guys and say, you know, I mean, I'm telling you something. Uh, I think that I made a mistake. You know, I'm going to, uh, to show you my, uh, my, my, my emotions right now. He's going to stand his hand now, and the guys are going to go for the handshake. He's going to go like that, pull it back, and say, this is what I got wow. for all of okay. you. you know? wow. I got a ring okay. in Miami. I made okay. the right move. I got a big <laughs> ring in Miami. You guys got nothing. You know, I'm the winner in this deal. By the way, none of those guys finished their careers with the Boston Celtics. That wasn't his ring finger. Okay, thank you for the clarification. (laughs) What do you make of the Raptors GM's comments about his team? This is an admission that the way that they were building the blueprint, which is we're a piece away, it'll just be P.J. Tucker, it'll just be Serge Ibaka, now they are totally shifting course because LeBron not only ended the Raptors, he ended basketball in Canada as we presently know it, with Lowry as a free agent, Ibaka as a free agent. That team was playing for twos. It was playing a mid-range game. LeBron's team could have beaten his team playing that way, playing for twos, but you certainly can't have both things, where Cleveland has LeBron and is playing a more evolved form of basketball. Now, Masayo Jerry, the general manager of the Raptors, said that they need a culture reset. He said they've got to get away from their one-on-one style of play, and I feel like you need to fire your coach now because what you just said basically was firing your coach because who would be to blame for the fact that you have this one-on-one setup? And now you've got this issue with this team where Kyle Lowry, he says he wants to go west. You don't want to have one-on-one style of play. You've got DeMar DeRozan, the mid-range killer in a time where being the mid-range guy isn't what you really want. He says he wants to become more lethal as a passer. Dude, start stepping out to 24 feet. That might correct a whole lot of their problems. Well, uh, wasn't the GM the one who put the team together? That's no, right. He's blaming everybody, right. the That's players, right. the coaches, That's right. assistant coaches, yep. you know, That's everybody. Right. Step That's up to the game and do your job, buddy. That was your responsibility. <laughs> if I were the owner, I'd fire his <laughs> That's what I would do. Okay, everybody. Man, everybody LeBron knew from from everything again. in that area. That's Woo! right. Was it run of the Mets to send security workers to check on Matt Harvey's in his pajamas? All right, in typical Metsian fashion, we take a story that was pretty bad and we make it all the more outlandish where we find out that once the Mets got word that Matt Harvey had a migraine, they sent somebody to his house just to make sure he was actually there, and apparently he answered the door while wearing his pajamas. I'm not exactly sure how I feel about this, though, because on one hand, it does feel creepy to send somebody to verify the story. On the other hand, the Mets are almost giving him more the benefit of the doubt than most people get. Because normally when your boss thinks you're lying, he just assumes you're lying. He doesn't go to find out whether or not it's true. Wow, he took another step on this that I wasn't expecting. Because this is a flabbergasting amount of distrust here. And Bomani is saying that this is actually something that they wanted proof of. My guess is those security workers got there. And the surprise is that Matt Harvey was there. They didn't believe at all that he was there. And they wanted to see if they could be more punitive because he was also lying lying to them that's a fractured relationship right there and it's the Mets like I don't even know if we blame this on the relationship it's just about that time for something like this to happen to the Mets well I tell you something if they came to my house at 10 p.m. and they knock at the door and I open the door I won't be wearing any pajamas (laughs) <laughs> that's a fact of life. Oh, buddy. that's a fact of life right there. He's going to be wearing those boxers, maybe, from the 1970s that he still has. Disgusting mm, thing. Nothing at all. Oh, <laughs> even worse somehow. I don't, I don't want to talk about this. Oh. Like, I, 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 I'm not your, I'm not actual no. family. Maybe Gerlaine Cologne. <laughs> what? Gerlaine Cologne? Maybe just Cologne my father will be wearing. I don't know what brand that is. I'm guessing he buys it at a gas station. Coming up next on my son's TV show, Joanna Jendrejcik. 
she used to take care of me and, and my sisters so good and and she doesn't want to see uh, her baby girl uh, getting beat up but most of the time it's that that i beat the people you know but <laughs> that's the thing the city double cash card presents tips for talking sports at the office number eight be informed I'm going to list some random stats that don't really mean anything. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. I'm nodding, but I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. That's not working. Wouldn't it be great if everyone said what they meant? The City Double Cash Card does. It lets you earn double cash back with 1% when you buy and 1% as you pay. The City Double Cash Card. Double means double. Joining us at the beach today is Joanna Yendreche. She's the UFC strawweight champion. She'll be defending her title May 13th. Let's talk to her. When did you discover at what age that this is something you actually like? Was there any time that you were afraid of it and didn't like it? You know, I'm twin. I have twin sister and uh, and uh, I was always this, this the, the, the stronger uh, the stronger twin, you know. Uh, I used to take care of, of, of me and my sister. And the thing is, like, I was very into the sport. I used to represent my school uh, in basketball, volleyball, handball, uh, and other sports. So I, when I was 13, actually, I got into the pro basketball team. But uh, I don't know why I, I went. Then I went uh, to taekwondo class, uh, but I didn't like it. So I had a break. Uh, for two years and then I joined the Muay Thai class and after I went for the first competition I won I felt like this is what I want to do in my life I want to be a professional fighter I want to be a professional athlete and and uh, I changed my life I became more healthy uh, in shape and uh, I used to travel a lot I used to train in Thailand in Holland and here we go. Today I train in American Top Team, the best, uh, the best gym in the world. Now, do you still get to play much basketball? You mentioned earlier that you did that when you were yeah, I used Yeah, I used to play basketball and I like it, you know. Like I said, I, I was very into the sport. I wish that, uh, that uh, female soccer was bigger that time, you know, because I could be a good uh, soccer player. I like soccer. I like to watch soccer. My favorite team is uh, Juventus Turin from Italy. So I'm very... I'm very into because of my fiance as well. He used to be a, a soccer player, so uh, so yeah, we are into the soccer. Like soccer is very popular in Europe. Was your family always supportive of this as a career choice, or did you have a lot of people in your family telling you, "No, this is crazy"? Uh, yeah, when I got into the martial arts, I started with Muay Thai when I was 16. So my parents they they were like, "Okay, let her do this." They didn't like this idea of. Uh, of uh, me fighting, but uh, th- they support me, you know, since my first training, my first fight t- till today, you know, they want me to stop fighting uh, because they know how hard I work every day, uh, how often I travel, and now I moved to American Top Team in Florida, so uh, I don't see them very often, but. Uh, it's part of my life, you know. I'm not going to be a fighter, fighter forever. So I know that uh, I want to build my brand uh, in the United States. That that's why I moved to American Top Team uh, last year, uh, September last year. And you know, I will fight for a few more uh, years longer. And that, that that's all. Then I will have a easy life back home with my fiance, my friends, and my my family. Who in your family gets most nervous and hates to see you fight the most? Oh, of course, my mom. She she doesn't watch my fights, and uh, she's so nervous. Even yesterday, I was on the phone with her, and I could uh, could hear that uh, she's already nervous. But still, like five five few days to go to the fight, so uh, she doesn't watch my fights live. Oh, afterward, though, if she knows you've won, that's oh, when she sometime, watches them? Sometimes, sometimes uh, she watches, but no, not very often, you know, not very often. She's kind of like panic, 
panic person, so she doesn't, you know, she she used to take care of me and, and my sisters so good and, and she doesn't want to see uh, her baby girl uh, getting beat up, but most of the time it's that, that I beat the people, you know, but <laughs> that's the thing. No, I'm just kidding, it's a fight, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> she doesn't want me to, uh, to, to see her or, or something like that. Who is the family member that most enjoys watching you fight? Does your fiance l love watching you fight? Oh, he's coming to Dallas. Uh, actually, he is, in two days he uh, he will come to Dallas with my twin sister and her husband, and uh, he's such a nervous during the fight, you know. So I don't know. I don't know who likes to watch the most. So nobody likes. Maybe it. they nobody know. Knows. Maybe no. maybe they know why. It. Maybe Dana White. Dana White likes it. He yes, loves to watch my fights. Yeah. But you're, but, so nobody in the family wants to he's, watch you fight. He, actually, he's part of my family, you know. He's my boss, but uh, I, I, I like him as a person, you know. He's my boss, but he's a, a, a good person as well. So definitely, Dana White is the biggest fan. <laughs> Hold on a second. Let's change camera angles here, get my father involved. Joanna, my father's got a question for you. What do you got, Bob? Yes, Joanna. Did you and your twin fight a lot? Oh, your twin. Uh, we did, actually, you know, and I won the first battle in the belly of my mom because uh, I'm older twin, so I'm, I'm, oh, I'm the, I'm first. the, yeah, I, ca I came out first. I'm 25 minutes older than my twin sister, so it's a big difference, you know, so uh, <laughs> we used to fight, we used to fight, and but we used to fight our older sister, you know. Oh. <laughs> Oh, tag team. You tag team. Yeah. Joanna, thank you for being on with us. Thank you guys for having me. Gracias, gracias, Joanna. You're listening to Love Advice with Leanne. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, hi, Leanne. Long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> Why, in your professional opinion, do you never take my calls off the air? Is this Carl? Yep, it's Carl. I mean, we had a few dates. Everything was great. I thought. Uh... Well, you know. When you switch to GEICO, you could save a lot of money on car insurance. Okay, awesome. You should call them. I will. GEICO, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Questionable is broadcast from the Clevelander Hotel on beautiful South Beach, Miami. Time to play the game that is wearing a wire. Do you question? I'm not saying another word around him. But if you give us topics and events, we'll question him. Do you question if this is Lionel Messi? I saw this already. This looks a good deal like Lionel Messi in Iran. Let's go to Iran. Wait a minute, that's not Messi? I mean, Messi's grown the beard, and so this guy was making the rounds in a Messi shirt and with a soccer ball through the streets, and people started gathering around as if Messi would wear his own jersey through the streets and wander around with a soccer ball. He might, man of the people. It's the world's game. That. Okay, let's have wow. some of that. Okay. What's he going to do? Is he going to walk through somebody's house? Yes, congratulations to me for being great. All right, I don't know what that dude right there is into, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that if you're pretending to be Lionel Messi and all you're doing is hanging around with kids and dudes, you're doing this totally wrong. The thing that makes this confusing is the beard. Let's put them side by side here so that everybody can see how much that guy actually looks like Messi. Which one's Messi? <laughs> Which one is it, Poppy? Which one's Messi, Poppy? The left or the right? Which one? I have no idea, really. Okay, very good. Let's move on. Do you question a stopping? All right, we go to Slovakia. Whenever we have video from one of those countries that didn't exist when I was in the fourth grade, it's always fun. Is this stopping the same thing as stopping? Oh, no, who's going to stop here? It's got to be the guy in red, right? Oh! Oh! Nobody stop! Nobody stop! Oh, ow. Oh! Oh, no, this guy. Good God! Well, hold on. What if he turns? Oh. Oh, the bear's dumb. The bear's a dumb bear. Didn't see the guy in the back. Oh, no. Or did the bear take a shortcut? <laughs> Why did they stop? Is he up in front there? Oh, did he cut them off? Did the bear cut them off and it's coming back this way? Tells you, man, that bear knows the terrain better than they do. <laughs> Home field advantage for the bear. Man, that bear didn't get that big by not eating people <laughs> on bicycles. 
You know, I mean, that bear is not that smart at all. If you really want to do something about those two cyclists, you, the bear has to be riding a bicycle too, you know, I okay, mean, for the chase good. to be I on, mean, you know. I mean, you got a bear riding a bicycle, you know, that's that human you mean beast. You know, they don't have a way out, buddy. Yeah, the bears that ride bikes are not the yeah. ones that you yeah. need to be afraid of out there because those are the bears who have been caught. Uh, admittedly, though, my father has a better video playing in his head. It's a better video. Time to play the game that can feel his toes or fingertips. See? Oh, no. Tell us what's on television tonight. He's usually going to be intrigued. On MILB.TV, the Toledo Mud Hens and the Gwinnett Braves. On what, what, dot TV? Like, get out of here with this. Let's just check in in the stands of a minor league game. Foul ball. Oh, no. <laughs> Come on, dude. Is that a hot water heater bottle that he, what is that that he's got in his left hand? Oh, is that a crumpled up foam finger? You, sir, are not number one. That is mean. Vamani, are you intrigued? I don't see what the problem is. Step your game up, little homie. Also, it's the Gwinnett Braves. It's a home game. They ever go have Migos night? I feel like you got to honor the most famous sons of your county. Papi, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. But listen, I can't believe that that kid that uh, gave up so fast, so quickly, so easy, you know? Kid, what you got to do is when that big guy turns your back on you, you jump on him and you beat him the hell out of him. You grab the ball and you run, you run, you run. He'll never be able to catch you. I mean, that's it, buddy. You got the edge in there. You know, you're fast and he's, he's very fat, so you don't have to worry about it. You keep on running. You go home and you keep on running. Yeah. And you just keep on running and running around like Forrest Gump, you know? You keep on doing that. You and do, you have no problem. If you do that, you better hope your dad can fight because that man will catch you when it might not be pleasant. On TNT, Game 5, Rockets and Spurs. Yeah, one of the few interesting series, even though the games haven't been particularly close at the end. Let's check in Game 4 in the stands. Oh, yeah. Shake it, big man. What is that a tattoo of? Is that, that would James be James Harden? Harden. I mean, does that look like James Harden to anybody out there? Okay, is that an actual tattoo? Why'd you do that? Bomani, are you intrigued? I am intrigued, and I'm trying to figure out how this show became the one that encouraged people to take off their shirts when they probably should leave them on because nobody enjoys watching flabby men shake quite like these two. Oh, no. Oh, no. Poppy, you've opened the door here, Bomani. Poppy, are you intrigued? Oh, oh see, no. see, I'm yeah. very, very yeah, intrigued. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I have the same exact tattoo. Gonna, that's yeah. right. Yeah. That's Let's right. Watch this. Watch this. No, I got the same exact no, tattoo no, 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 on this no, no, guy. No, 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 no. I got him right there. Right there. No! No! Oh! Wait a minute. He does have the tattoo. That's right. <laughs> That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching. The Running Beard and I will be back here tomorrow. You're going to have that again? <laughs> it's a tattoo. It's there for life now. What am I supposed to do? Jody Avergan here. Later this year, ESPN will bring you 30 for 30 podcasts. We're finding the best stories for you right now. And to do that, we're behind the wheel of the new Mini Countryman, the biggest Mini yet. With all four all-wheel drive, we can chase down a story in the city, the country, and most places in between. No matter what story you're chasing, the new Mini Countryman will help you find it. It's available now, and the new 30 for 30 podcasts are coming this June. Visit miniusa.com slash newcountrymen.